What's going on guys? I am super excited to finally be bringing you a new franchise mode series. I think it's been like three months since the last one, the Montreal Canadiens. I had a poll actually asking guys who I should be, and the Ottawa Senators actually won that poll. Thing is, the last two teams we've used have been from the Atlantic, Montreal and Detroit. So I figured it was time to switch it up, and the team that got the second most votes was the LA Kings. So we're gonna be using the LA Kings here, which you guys obviously know from the title. Ottawa though for sure will be the next one. So looking at the LA Kings here, you can see top players, you got Kopitar, Doughty, and then Jonathan Quick. The Kings, without a doubt, have some of the worst depth in the NHL. Kopitar and Doughty, obviously, are both around 90 overall. And then after that, I think the next best skater is Jeff Carter, who's an 81. So you literally have no one in your mid to high 80s, even really low 80s. If Carter's an 81, like there's only a few guys around that 80-81 spot, and then the rest of the team's in the 70s. Quicks are starting goal turn at 83, but definitely on the decline. So this team's in need of a rebuild for sure. Obviously, we have good prospects in Turcotte, Velarde. Should get a top pick in this year's draft. Even more drafts moving forward. So overall there, 81 has us being the worst team in the Pacific by far. The next worst are the other two Cali teams, Sharks 84, Ducks 85. And we're actually the three worst teams in the West along with the Chicago Blackhawks there. Now I've actually gone through and changed some of the player ratings and a bunch of the player potentials, especially the prospects. I had to completely overhaul a bunch of different prospects. So kind of as we go through this franchise, you guys will notice that when we're making trades, looking at different teams, a lot of the ratings potential should hopefully be uh, more realistic to real life. The draft should also be a lot more realistic, at least the 2020 draft that is. So looking at the East here, you can see Detroit's 82. Ottawa's also 81. So we're tied with Ottawa there as the worst team in the NHL. So we should have a pretty good shot at Lafreniere. Obviously in real life, the Kings are picking second. So they're going to get Byfield or Stutzel. Uh, if you look at the Metro there, you got the Devils 83 here pretty low. So again, we're definitely a rebuilder. Um, there's no question there. Honestly, I'm debating trading one of, if not both, Kopitar and Doughty. Just to kind of make a splash here and really start this rebuild off right. So for this guy's owner will be turned off. Side cap is on. Um, head coach at lines. Fog of War, player morale all off just because... I find they don't really add a lot for me. Computer trades, though, of course, is on. And look at the rest of the settings here. Obviously, trying to make it the most realistic possible. So game style there is 4-4 four to four full sim. Injuries turned off. Period length, 20 minutes. Often to cap penalties are on. Uh, franchise mode length can be 10 years, as usual. Computer trades on. Typically, superstar. Draft pick ownership. Authentic. Side cap on. Trade difficulties hard. A lot of people like medium, but honestly, I kind of like the challenge that hard gives. I think, honestly, sometimes it makes it almost too hard to make a trade compared to real life, but again, sometimes it's too easy, so I feel like that kind of balances out. Um, too well, the sim engine scoring there set to high, as I think that actually reflects the real NHL a bit better. And right here, guys, my list of created players, pretty much same as before, except I've actually added Alexander Romanov, who I wish we had for the Montreal Canadiens franchise mode. 72 overall, high top 40 potential, you can see his stats there. Pretty good two-way defenseman. Uh, if you guys don't know, Turk has a created player. Obviously going to be counting on him big time to help turn this franchise around. 18 years old, 75 overall, medium league potential. Pretty much does it all. You can see there's hands are all 85, decent shot, speed. Again, does it all. Should be a big part of this rebuild. Uh, you got Vlasic there, Bobby Brink, Lambert. Again, most of these guys you should recognize. Now, Connor Bedard, you might not. He actually got granted exceptional stats in WHL. Was the first overall pick. Should be the first overall pick in 2023. 14 years old, so it's tough to kind of make his rating potential, but I went 60 overall there, high elite. Some people think he might be franchised, but because he's only 14, we're so far out, I feel like high elite makes sense. High elite can turn into franchise. He's also got a really good shot on him, so even though he's only 14, you can see 78 action, 75 power, I think's pretty good. 80 skating, and again, for a 14-year-old, I don't think it's bad at all. By the time his draft rolls around, he should be a low 80. Now, I think after that, pretty much everything else is the same. I actually did drop Codfield by a couple overall. Um, I noticed the Montreal franchise, I felt like he got too good too fast, I think, based on the fact he's still playing in college and whatnot. But I think everybody else here is good. Uh, Brodeur, you can see, is assigned to France. I always used him on that custom team with the father-son. Because he's in France, he won't be in the franchise. No worries there. But I think everything else is the same as before. Actually, guys, one more change I made. Elias Strokin here is now 83 overall. I feel like once he does come over, he'll definitely be fighting for at least the backup spot with Grice, if not even the starter spot with Varlamov. So... 83, I think, makes a lot more sense than 82 for him. Also, too, I was thinking, the Rams made the Super Bowl a couple years ago. LeBron and the Lakers are the favorites to win the NBA championship this year. I feel like it's time we return the Kings to glory, so hopefully we can get that done. So, no surprise here, guys. Team stats as we build it. Like I mentioned, I think we're tied with Ottawa for being the worst team in the league. I'll give you a quick look at the lines here. Obviously, they're about to get switched up a ton, so don't really worry about the chemistry. I'll worry about that kind of once we actually have our team in place to start the season. Kopitar, again, best forward on the team by far. He's a 90. After that, our best forwards are 81. Most of them are like in their high 70s. So you can see really not a lot of depth there, but we are trying to rebuild, get top picks. So 
not the end of the world. Um, defensively there, you got Dowdy, who have actually lowered to 8 overall. I think before he was a 91, I want to say. Obviously, he hasn't been quite as good the past couple seasons, so I feel like that was a more fair rating for him. You can see we have Ben Hutton there in 80, the rest of them all 70s. Again, it's tough right now. Uh, quick, 83 overall, but he's 33. We're definitely still going to need a goalie of the future. Uh, look at the AHL here. Obviously, Turcotte leading that team, first line center there. He's actually playing with two former Leafs in Grundstrom and Moore. Um, the rest of the guys, Anderson Dolan's not too bad. He's 73, medium top 6. Uh, defensively there, you got Burnfoot, 75, high top 6D. Uh, Clegg there, 68, medium top 4. So uh, there are, you know, some bright spots for sure on this team. Uh, if you guys don't know the captain C, Kopitar is where is the C. Uh, Carter and Doughty both wear A's. Figure 2, I just show you the trade values for some of these guys. So Kopitar there is pretty close to the max, honestly, which is surprising given his age and salary. 10 million for 5 more years. Doughty there, 11 million for 8 more years. A big reason why I want to trade him. And still his value is not that bad. So I feel like this is definitely the time. 29 when he's 37, he's not going to be that good. I would say he's probably like four years left, which means the last half of that contract is going to really suck. Uh, Turcotte there, Velarde, I wanted to play in the AHL. Unfortunately, it's that glitch. They put him in the CHL. Anderson Dolan already mentioned. Uh, Kupari there, I actually forgot to. C7, medium top six. He was actually their first round pick back in 2018. Um, Akil Thomas, obviously, had that huge goal in the World Juniors. So there are, you know, a lot of bright spots on this team. Kelia, they just got in the second round last year. Solid sniper. I actually think that was probably the steal of the second round. Like, I thought for sure. He was going to be gone the first. Goaltending wise, you can see there's just nothing of value there. And then draft picks. We actually have three seconds to work with, a couple thirds, a couple fourths. So a lot of assets here. But I think the big thing we got to do is just trade Drew Doughty because um, I don't think that contract's going to be too good in the future. Uh, I'll give you guys a quick look here at offense, defense, goaltending ratings. Kind of just to see where we start out and then we, where we finish. So 81 offense, 82 defense, 80 goaltending. Hopefully in a few years, you know, all three of those are 90. We're definitely going to have to do some work. Also, too, guys, a big thing I forgot to mention. We have over $20 million in salary cap, so obviously we have to use that to our advantage. So right now, we're trying to get a blockbuster trade with the Devils for P.K. Subban. As you can see, he's on the block, so it should be pretty easy to trade for. 86 overall, making $9 million for the next three years. I'm also trying to get their 2020 first, which I'm thinking will be a lottery pick. It turns into an elite player for us. I think this is a steal. Doughty's he's an 88, so he's only two overall higher. He's making $2 million more there at $11 million and five more years left at eight. So we're kind of stealing a first rounder here if they say yes to this. If it turns out to be like a Frenier, Byfield, Stutzel, it's just an amazing trade for us. So we'll see what the Devils say here. Hopefully it's a yes. Trades rejected. Okay, I thought it'd be a bit closer. The value's pretty close. Maybe we can add something small. All right, guys, I'm going to try adding Ben Hutton here. I'm pretty sure LA signed him for free in real life, but he's 80 overall, which isn't too bad. Um, we'll throw on, I don't know, Calgary's fourth round pick there. It's pretty much nothing. Again, I think we're really going to get like a top 10 pick for free, plus shed tons of cap space in further years. We can even honestly flip Subban for something else. See what the devil say here. Trades rejected. The value's just a bit low though. Okay, so try adding another fourth round pick there. I feel like Hutton 2 force to save all that money, get their first round pick. It's probably worth it for us. And there we go. We're calling up Subban and Burnfoot. Great trade for us, I think. I had a couple of defensemen, guys, and I thought this was kind of hilarious. PK Subban's are only defensemen with higher than a top six role. The rest of them are depth defensemen or Meyer defensemen, which is pretty sad. And I think now, guys, I'm actually going to wait till the deadline to make another trade. Our players should have a bit more value as teams will have a bit more wiggle room in terms of the salary cap. So, as you can see here, the chemistry looks a bit better. We got Camp playing with Kopitar and Ferk on the top line. If you guys don't know, Ferk's got an insane shot. 95 slap shot power, so maybe you can actually have a decent year there on the first line. We got Carter on the second with Ifello. Uh, Brown there's on the third. They're actually getting a plus one. Defense, obviously, you got Subban. You got nothing else. Uh, special teams there, I did my best to fix. Tough to actually get some chemistry with this team. Like, minus one there on the first four-man power play. The PK actually gets a plus three. Um, for the most part, though, it's pretty much just all zeros. So, again, we're trying to be bad. We're trying to rebuild. I feel like chemistry is obviously good in helping players grow, but we also don't want to play that good. We want to get a high pick, so... Let's see uh, how this team does. So we're now at the end of 2019 here, guys. They have a record of 13, 24, and 4. So obviously not doing good, which is what we want. I think I saw the center said 18 points, though. Um, did I see that right? We have 30. Centers have 18, 6 wins. Wow, they really want Lafreniere in this sim. Uh, Kopitar, doing a lot better than I expect. 45 points in 41 games. I feel like it's got to be Ferk. You know, he's got 30 assists there. He's probably just rifling the puck. So, yeah, we're worse in the league, not including the Senators, who don't have double digit wins yet like what do you even say about that hopefully we can somehow catch them but if not 
Obviously, uh, we can always get lucky in the lottery. Also, guys, I just looked at the draft class, and it actually looks legit. You got Lafreniere ranked number one, Stutzel two, Byfield three. Obviously, a lot of people have Byfield at two, but some people do have Stutzel there. They then have Raymond at four, Rossi five, Drysdale six, Perfetti seven, Holtz eight. So yeah, like the draft class actually looks legit for once. Love to see that. And look at this, guys. The Devils just flipped Ben Hutton along with a couple third-round picks for Frederick and a fifth. Honestly, I don't think Frederick's like that good to be giving up two thirds and Hutton, but to each their own. Now Calgary's trying to give us Stone a fourth and a seventh for a third and a fourth. But honestly, I'm not trying to make our team better. I'm actually gonna obviously try and trade away more guys at the deadline, get picks, get prospects, especially with how bad Ottawa's doing. Like it's gonna be tough. They're at 31 points now. I just saw we're at 40. Uh, Winnipeg just got Gustafson, big addition to their defense. Calgary gets Logan Stanley, obviously a huge D man. A second and a third. Also, two guys in regards to Winnipeg actually made Dustin Buffalo only have a one year contract. So he's on their team for the first season, but if they don't resign him, we'll be in free agency as that's the case in real life. But obviously, they could resign him. We don't control the computer. Uh, Marshall wants to give us a third Olet and a fifth for two thirds. I'm gonna say no to that. Honestly, getting a lot of trash offers. I think there was a couple ones I didn't show you guys. Uh, Boychuk for third and a fourth. Really cheap, but $6 million. I think he's like an 81, maybe an 82. And I'd rather just have that cap space do what I want with in free agency or even take on a terrible contract from some other team. Hopefully, maybe get a first round pick with it. So, uh, a couple weeks away from the deadline now. Like, look at this. Edmonton's offering us Russell in a third for a third and a fourth. They need to be giving us a second with Russell in exchange for a seventh for me to just consider, you know, taking on $4 million next year for free, essentially. And look at this big trade. Carolina is obsessed with defensemen. They just got Tony D'Angelo. I don't get it. They already have, like, seven or eight NHL defensemen when everyone's healthy, along with the third round pick, and the Rangers got a first and a second. Also, too, guys, I didn't even show you, but, um, and TBR's on waivers. Yep, thanks for the free player. Actually, he might have went to Ottawa. I Actually, no, he showed up, so that means Ottawa didn't want him, so 80 overall, free TBR, we'll take that, but like I was saying, I actually boosted Dougie Hamilton on Carolina. I think he's an 87 now, Slavin's an 86, uh, Pesh is an 83. I feel like all three of those guys were underrated. The fact that it made their defense better, they still traded for a good young defenseman, D'Angelo. I mean, I guess true to real life. The Ducks here get Miku Koivu and Hunt for a first-round pick, Kindop. 2021 first-round pick, so not giving up this year's first. I don't know where the Ducks are. We have to look at that because very interesting trade. They're actually in a wild-card spot. Okay, so they know they might miss, but I'm really surprised they're willing to go up a 2021 first there. So 35 points I just saw the Senators have. We're at 48, so we're still 13 ahead. Kopitar continues to play well there, 65 points in 63 games, which is good to see. Also, guys, we were able to get TBR there from waivers, which I think is an awesome pickup. I mean, 20-year-old, 80-overall defenseman for free. He's making $2 million for the end of this year. I think we could definitely resign him, be a solid bomb six for us in the future right now. I mean, he's a top pair guy. Him and Subban actually get plus one. The deadline here, guys, trying to trade Lewis to Carolina for Buffalo's third. Uh, he's 33 years old, 29 overall, a veteran. We're not going to be bringing him back. If we get a third-round pick, that'd be great. And they say yes, that's an awesome trade. Turcotte, we're also not calling it up. We're going to let him stay in the AHL and hopefully grow. Also, guys, I realized I made a mistake making that Doughty for Subban trade when I did. I should have waited a couple days, as it was before they adjust their player salaries to meet the cap floor. And since we were below it, you can see Subban's not making 9.5, uh, Brown 6.2. Basically, it seemed like everyone added 500k to their salary, so kind of sucks, but, you know, what are you going to do? And next year, guys, I'm offering Jonathan Quick to the Detroit Red Wings. I feel bad for any LA fans. I already traded Doughty. Looking to trade quick now, but I mean, he's making $6 million as an 8th year overall goalie for the next four years. And he's 34 years old, so it's not like he's getting any better. Jimmy Howard here is essentially just there for cap purposes. $4 million for the end of the year. Then I'll go to free agency. Uh, basically, we just save $6 million for the next three years. See what the Red Wings say. Trades rejected. Fair enough. And speaking of goalies, guys, right now I'm actually going to try and pick up Georgia from the New York Rangers. He's on the block, which makes sense. They have three goalies, Ham, Shashirkin, Lungfist. He's pretty solid. 24 years old, 81 overall, medium starter. I feel like if he plays well, he could get up to like 83, 84 by the time he's done growing. Only have to give a third and seventh round pick for him. Um, I think the third was a little bit shy. Now with the seventh, it's actually a bit on our side. He's on the block. They want both picks. See what they say here. Trades accepted. I think that's honestly a steal for us. And next year, guys, I feel like we found another good value trade. Ottawa actually has Anthony Duclair on the block, which is kind of surprising. Just under $2 million there for one more year. 82 overall, 24 years old. Pretty good sniper, I think. Could bring him in, probably get him for like $3 million. Offering them Dursey, who... Not bad potential, medium top four, but he's still only a 65 at 21 years old. So I feel like what's his ceiling? Maybe a low 80, and honestly, you have to really start growing. So the value's pretty equal, and they have to clear on the block. I feel like this should go through. And there we go. I think that's an awesome trade for us. So after those few trades, guys, here's an update look at the forward group. No chemistry boost now, but Duclair is playing on the top line with Kopitar. Hopefully he does well there. Of course, Georgiev there playing with Quick. 
I think, you know, again, goalies in this game can grow in one year. If they have a really good year, they can go up like five overall. So if that's the case for Georgia two or three years from now, awesome trade. All right, guys, we're at the end of the season now with a 29-48-5 record. Obviously, we did what we set out to do. I saw the Blues there finish last in the Central with 84 points. Unfortunately, the Senators did it better, 47 points total. They got three first-round picks. I mean, they're going to be tough to beat, I think, in the coming years. So the Ducks actually made the playoffs there, 96 points. Sharks as well, 101. I don't know why the Sharks sim so well. They also don't have that much depth, but they at least have, like, a filled-out top six. They have Burns. They have Carlson. Lots of, you know, big contracts moving forward. Um, the Central there, Avalanche, Blackhawks, Jets. On the East, the three teams you'd expect. And then in the Metro there, you actually had the Blue Jackets, Devils, Islanders missing. Really glad to see the Devils missing, obviously. Hopefully, that's a lottery pick for us. So... Kopitar there, 87 points, 82 games. Again, I'm really surprised to see him play that well. He put up over a point per game with no helps. So definitely impressive. He's only 32 years old, so I feel like we can keep him around for at least a little bit longer. Five years there at 10.5, so until he's 36, I think we could hopefully get him another cup. Uh, Camp there, 62 points, not bad. Furk at 55, 24 goals. Could definitely see him growing a huge year for him. Same with Camp, honestly, 60. Uh, Duclair at 53, Carter 49, not too bad. Even Brown, actually, 49. Uh, same with High Fellow, so three guys there. All one shy of 50. Brown only had a minus 3, though. And Kopitar was actually a plus 7. Uh, Subban 39. Subban 39. As long as he doesn't drop in rating, we'll be okay. Um, definitely looking to possibly trade him this offseason. The rest of the guys there really didn't do too great. Uh, Goaltending-wise, quick. Not going to have a great record. No shutouts. 0.894, though, isn't terrible. 3.61. Uh, George Evans, his four games played, went 2-2. Two and 0.914 two, and 2.53. So hopefully that's a sign of some good things to come. Take a quick look here at the AHL as well. Turcotte 59 and 66, he's up to a 77 now. Moore 51, Grunstrom 44, Anderson Dolan there 33. So, you know, not great, but definitely not terrible or anything. I'll see you led the entire league in scoring here. I'm going to take a guess, say Sagan, McDavid. Sometimes it's McDavid, sometimes like 12th on the list. 119, Crosby, Ovechkin, 66 goals. Kessel 105, Malkin, Dreisaddle. Uh, Gensel, a huge year. McKinnon, Shifley. I'm assuming OB 66 goals are good for the Mauritius Shard. Yeah, they are. The next closest there, Patrick Kane. Hoffman at 49 with 88 points. About to be a free agent. He is going to get paid for sure. I'm also curious to see who led defensemen in scoring. I saw somebody else do this. I feel like it's a good idea to check this. Carlson makes sense. Like 91 overall. His offensive stats are nuts. Keith there at 73. That's really surprising. Actually lowers potential from high elite to high top four. I felt like a bit made a bit more sense with his age, his recent play. Doughty did have 69, nice, playing for the Devils, so even at 88, still didn't do too bad. Um, I think he, what, scored twice as much as Subban, but, you know, that big, long contract. The Devils, if that picks anywhere in the top three, I'm happy with our trade, especially if we can flip Subban to get something else. And look at this, Kale McCard, 61 points, now an 88 overall. I feel like he's pretty much a lock there to get the Calder. And next year, guys, we're going to take a look at the standings for the entire league. Obviously, we finished last specific. Philly there won the uh, President's Trophy, 120 points. You had six teams there with 100 plus. Um, so let's see. Worst team to make the playoffs. Arizona kind of got robbed at 13. Uh, let's see here. New York Rangers, number 18, 85 points they get in. Um, Edmonton there missed, even though C Connor won the Art Ross. Um, Carolina, 21 gets in. That's that's ridiculous, to be honest. So the West just had such a better year. I mean, St. Louis, they're 84 points. Like I said, last in the Central, really not a terrible point total. Um, Devils, 80, 27. So that should you know give us decent odds in the draft. Detroit 75, Islanders 72, we had 63, and then Ottawa Senators 47, 19 wins. I think Detroit had 17 wins before the season got canceled, but there was still like a month left, so Ottawa probably did worse than Detroit was on pace to doing this year, which is definitely saying something. So uh, I'll send through the playoffs here. Obviously, we're excited about the draft, free agency. Don't really care who wins the playoffs, but we'll take a look. Also, too, guys, in case you were wondering, our AHL team did not make the playoffs. Uh, 65 points there. And 66 games, what are they, second last in the division. The playoffs just ended, guys. The Colorado Avalanche are your Stanley Cup champions, and the Cleveland Monsters are the Calder Cup champions. I feel like Colorado has been winning a lot of Stanley Cups recently in my Sims, so I'm not sure if that's a sign of things to come, but you never know. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Okay, so Ottawa, get the first pick via the Islanders pick. So it's similar to how, like, the Sharks pick did better for them in real life. Detroit picks second, which normally is a good thing, but not when we're trying to get a top pick. Uh, and then Ottawa's actual last place pick gets third. Then, of course, we dropped a fourth. Typical. The Devils pick is fifth, which is where it should have been. So we're picking four and five, which I guess I, I was pretty upset at first because, I mean, we had a chance to have two top three picks. Four and five, though. Uh, we could go Rossi and Drysdale. Rossi, Perfetti, um, Raymond. 
I really wanted a top three pick though. Still, I think I'm okay with that. Maybe somebody will do something crazy. You never know with the computer. So we'll take a look at the playoff tree here. Avalanche swept the Ducks first round, beat the Jets in seven, Flames in six, and then they swept the Lightning. That's pretty surprising. Uh, Lightning there went through the Rangers, best set with the Bruins, and a best set with the Penguins. So they had a pretty uh, tough road there to the Stanley Cup final. Awards next here. So I already know all the team awards, individual awards. McDavid gets the Art Ross. Crosby, though, gets the heart. I feel like McDavid might have got snubbed there, or maybe probably because they didn't make the playoffs. Uh, Carlson, James Norris, that makes sense. Kessel, Lady Bing. Hughes got the call. They actually lowered his potential from high elite to medium elite. felt like that made more sense, but I'm surprised he got it over McCarr, to be honest. Kadri there, Con Smythe. Carter Hart, Vesna. He's going to grow like crazy now. He's already high rating, considering his age, with that medium elite potential. He also got the William M. Jennings. Uh, Burl Wiki there, got the Bill Masterton. Again, usually goes to a defenseman on a crap team. Uh, Sharks coach there gets the Jack Adams. I feel like that's fair. O'Reilly got the Selkie again, Crosby, Ted Lindsay. They, they snuffed McDavid twice, and Ovechkin there for the third straight year. He gets the Marisha Shard. Um, so next year, we'll take a look at the AHL awards. Obviously, we make the playoffs, so just scroll through the team awards quick. Individual here, best aligned most points. He's another guy actually uh, changed potential, I think, from elite to top six. He also got the MVP, so he still did well. Turcotte, though, uh, had the most goals in the AHL. That's sick. Didn't even realize. Best line, though, got outstanding rookie. Connaughton there, best D-man. DeSmith, best goalie. Uh, Stenlin there, MVP for the Monsters. That's kind of surprising. Best line also got sportsmanship, Schmaltz there, community involvement, and then DeSmith also had lowest goals against. Okay, so at least we got one award. Turcotte, most goals in the AHL. We'll take it. We're picking four and five in the draft. I feel like we can probably move up from four to at least two or three to try and get Byfield or Stutzel, as I think Stutzel's like the same as Raymond, maybe one higher. Byfield I know for sure is higher. Lafreniere obviously is the highest. Um... We'll try something. Also, guys, looking at retired players here, I don't think there's really any shocker. Marion Host is retiring. UC Hoken and Derek Roy. Ham use, MacArthur. Uh, so really no one crazy. Start so the draft now, guys, and no surprises here. Neither Ottawa or Detroit have their picks on the block. I can't believe this, too. Ottawa's picking one and three, and then we're picking four and five. So similar scenario, just worse. I was wondering, too, if maybe somehow one of the lower-rated guys got pushed up into the top three, but it's still Lafreniere, Byfield, Stutzel. So... We're looking at, like, Raymond Rossi, which obviously isn't too bad. Uh, Perfetti usually goes pretty well. They come at medium franchise. It's medium lead, I know, because I've said it. Um, Holtz there. I would honestly really wouldn't mind trading back into to try and get Askarov. I feel like he's going to be a late first. We have, like, what, two or three seconds. We could definitely potentially pull that off. Uh, you guys can see, like, this Forster guy boosted him in rating. Uh, he was a guy I think they had too low. Same with Seth Jarvis, Dawson Mercer. Like, all these guys were projected to go first round of your life, so they should be here. Uh, Lundell, you can see Sanderson. I actually forgot to mention that. Made him a high top four. I think Jack Quinn's like high top six. So, tries to let eight there. Might as well try and make a trade with Ottawa here to get first overall in the Frenier. I feel like he's worth it because he has high lead potential. He's going to come to the draft at a low 80. Whereas Byfield and Stutzel, it's probably not worth it to move up the spots to get them. As whether it's Rossi, Raymond Perfetti, they're all like an overall below same potential. And it looks like Kopitar's actually on up and rating now at 91. Uh, Turcotte's at 78, so that's really nice to see. What's it going to take here? Obviously, it's going to take our fourth. Wow, our fourth has so much less value than the first overall. Um, I'll offer, like, a couple seconds, 54, 57th. I doubt it goes through. Yeah, trade rejected. I feel like we're going to have to sit at four and five, but we're going to get two good players. All right, guys, so as you can see, the top three went down probably true to real life. Lafreniere first overall, 82 high lead. Byfield second, 79 medium lead, and then Stutzel third, 78 medium lead. So we get back-to-back -back kicks here. Honestly, I'm thinking about doing a little European action with Raymond and Rossi. I believe I boosted Rossi up to like a 75 medium lead. Uh, Raymond's still a 77 medium lead. I think Perfetti is like a 74. I think I lowered Holtz to like a 75. Drysdale, I want to say, is like a 72. Now, he's a defense in which we don't have, but I don't know. Drysdale, I think, in this game usually doesn't grow too crazy. I already mentioned Quinn's a high top six, Sanderson high top four. Uh, Lundell's medium leap, but kind of a crap skater. I think Holloway's medium top six. So I think it'd be pretty cool if we did like an entire European first round. We go Raymond Rossi here back to back at four and five, then try and trade some of our second rounders to get back in, pick Askarov late. Like that would be an insane first round for us. So um, we're going to take Rossi first here just because I want to see if he grew it all. I already know what Raymond is. And Rossi, you know, he is a 75 medium elite, okay, but he's got pretty sick stats. So next we're going to take Lucas Raymond again, 77 medium elite. I mean, those two guys, Turcotte, I feel like we definitely have a lot to look forward to with this team. 
All right, guys, we just simmed all the way to the 19th pick, hoping Askarov would still be there, as I was his ranked by Central Scouting, and he is. Uh, four suit here just got taken by the Flames, 64 medium top six. He's supposed to be like a late first rounder. I made him have a pretty good shot, as that's what he's known for, and I guess uh, the Flames liked that. Rangers here get Baron and Lebedev. Mercer goes to the Devils, Amirov Wild. Sanderson Pred, Strange is going to the Oilers, Holloway Stars, Lundell Panthers, Quinn Canadians. Drysdale Blues, Holtz Blue Jacket, Fatty going to the Sabres. So we definitely made the two best picks at four and five. Raymond was the fourth best, and there was a 50-50 between Rossi and Perfetti. I know for sure Rossi's the better skater, and Perfetti's got like the higher offensive awareness. As again, I tried to make it as realistic as possible, and I feel like Rossi's got better playmaking, and like they're pretty similar in terms of shot. I forget exactly, but if we can get pick 19 here, and get us care of. This first round's nuts. All right, guys, I'm offering the Jets the 33rd overall pick, so they're dropping back like 14 spots, and the St. Louis Blues second round pick 2021. The value's pretty equal. I think they go for it. Trades rejected, really. Uh, it says a bit off, though, so um, fair enough. We have two-thirds there, a fifth, a sixth. Let's throw in the Calgary Flames fourth rounder next year. And there we go. Okay, so two seconds and a fourth, and we're now going to take a high elite goalie and a scare up. I guess just no one wanted a goalie. Also, I know in this game, the goalies don't have as high value, but uh, that was highway robbery for sure. And our next pick here, guys, is 23 in the second round. Um, I'll show you how the rest of the first round went. So there was only like, what, 10 more picks. Uh, Connor Zeri there, Seth Jarvis, uh, Ponmerev, Bork, Mysik, Perot, um, Ashtholler, Wallander, Bork, Chubasov, Greg, and then Sterling. So uh, some pretty good players getting taken. You can see Caden Gooley there beginning of the second. Rochette. When did uh, Hendrick Sapieri get taken? Has he not gotten taken yet? Jake Neighbors, because um, that's going to be our... Oh, wow, he got taken number 17. Honestly, that would have been such a good pick for us. Who the heck is this? Langkow, 73 medium elite. The Sharks with a steal of a goalie pick. What is the scare of? I think he's 74 high elite. That guy's just computer generated, and Sharks stole him there in a second. Like, we didn't even have to trade up. Could have gotten somebody pretty much as good as the scare of, but... Um, that's fine. I actually just realized I totally forgot to check gems and stuff because it's kind of a draft We already know going into it Apparently Korolev here is a gem. He's and he's about to get picked. So good thing we checked uh, Blomqvist their starter is a gem. Sam McKay is supposed to go 73. All right, so I guess we'll trust our scouts here We'll take Korolev. Hopefully he is a gem and Medium top six. He's only 62. But honestly, it's not too bad a pick. Also, I noticed he's a grinder So maybe he'll turn out to be like a perfect third line winger and Detroit just offered us a third and a fourth for our second I'm gonna say no there I uh, don't, like feel, don't feel like it's good enough value. So um, pick number 57. I feel like we could just take the other gem. Pretty sure he's like 71 or something. Uh, 79. Guaranteed low top four. It's probably a bit higher rating. Um, we should have another pick before then to take him. We have two thirds. So I don't really trust. Those guys with the faces aren't going to be good because I would know about them. Uh, Vural Baev though. I'm, is he made up? I don't even know. Uh, I'm going to go with him. Estonian. I'm assuming he's made up. He's from Estonia. Please be good. Uh, oh, let's go. 52, but he's medium elite. So, low rating, but if he grows, that's a great pick. Our next pick here, guys, is actually the second pick in the third round. Obviously, uh, we'd have our own pick. So, I think I'm going to take that gem here. We'll play it safe. We got Luckily. Oh, Kyle, I think he's medium top nine, um, which isn't too bad. Uh, Gene Luke Foodie actually is still available. I know for a fact I lowered him from medium top six to low top six. Felt like that was a bit more fair. We already got Velarde. Could have a couple Spitfires. Uh, Kyle, medium top nine. I feel like I'd rather go Foodie here, low top six. Kind of has a higher ceiling. As well as 67 overall, which is pretty solid. And you know what, guys? I'm going to try and get both Spitfires here. Islanders picks on the block. So um, I noticed our next third is like pretty soon. I'm offering the Islanders the 69th pick for the 65th with a seventh. So I mean, third round, they dropped back four spots for a free pick. Yeah, they're going to say they should say yes there. Honestly, Kyle's probably not the best pick here. Um, but. We get two more Spitfires joining Velarde. I feel like it's definitely worth it. And as you can see there, 63 medium top nine. Not too bad at all. Next year, guys, trying to get a big trade at the St. Louis Blues for their third and fourth round picks this year. Offering them our fifth and sixth this year, along with Toronto's third next year, our fourth next year. So basically, they're pushing their picks to next year, picking up a fifth and a sixth. See what they say. Trades accepted. Okay, I feel like that was pretty good value. And looking at the numbers, I feel like that should get us both gems we want. Um, pick 70 here. Oh, I think Reichel might have been the gem. But if he was... He's only medium top nine, so really that's not too big of a loss. Um, let's check here. Oh, no, they're still both there. Okay. Uh, so McKay, 73. And then the goalie we should be able to get as well with the next pick. 64, low top 4D, not too bad at all. Again, didn't really see much outside the gems. We could have just, you know, taken a couple stabs in the dark. But usually the first round is kind of just 
the guys you know, and then Blancfist here, uh, guaranteed medium starter. 52 overall is pretty low, but that was an insane draft for us, honestly, guys. Like, I think every single pick we hit on, which is insane. Three first round picks getting us Rossi, Raymond, Iskarov. We got super lucky with that random medium elite player in the second round. Then we got a couple Spitfires and Foodie and Kyle. And our last couple picks were gems as well. So literally every single pick we hit on, just insane. So we're at the reassigned phase here, guys. As I already mentioned, Kopitar's now 91. Uh, we got Brown and Carter actually up to 83, which is pretty surprising, and it also helps too with their big 5.6 and 6.2 respectively for the next couple years. I feel like we might as well hold on to them. We're not going to get value back in a trade, and when their contracts run up in two years, that's around the time we should start being good, so it um, makes sense just to, you know, help us hit the cap floor with those contracts. Ferk here is actually up to an 82. 725k over the next two years is a steal. His shot's even better now. 96-85 slap shot. The wrist shot's really good too. Um, I can't believe actually he grew that much. I fell there 82. Same with Kemp there. Uh, Duclair, still an 82. Doesn't want to resign with us. He's actually a pending UFA at 24. I feel like it must be because of how many times he's been traded. As I checked Cap Friendly, he's still an RFA with Ottawa. So that's got to be it. Uh, 4 million there for three years is an 82. I mean, I don't know. We have the cap space. I don't want to lose him for nothing after we traded for him. TVR we got off waivers, but for the right price. I mean, chilling dollars for two years for him, I think it's pretty solid for an 80. If he says no, could still get him in free agency. Uh, Walker there, 25.79. I think it's worth resigning for sure. I think we do 1.75. He gets up to an 80. That's actually a steal of the contract. Uh, Ryan, 27.78. Doesn't want to come back. That's fine. We don't need him. Uh, Let do 27.78. I think we could find somebody younger and or better. Uh, Turkov, Lardy, both up to 78s now. Uh, Schaller, we don't really need at all. Uh, Raymond, 77. We could actually play him in the NHL. His roles there is a fourth line forward. Um, I noticed though Rossi. Minor scoring forward, and I'll probably go back to the OHL. Get 100 and what, 5 points, 66 games last year, so who knows how much he's going to tear it up this time. Uh, but I feel like Raymond honestly makes sense to probably play like third line, even higher if we can. So Raymond, we're for sure offering a contract to. Uh, I'm not sure if it's Wagner or Wagner. 900k for two years. I mean, 76, maybe he can turn into like a fourth line for us. Uh, Rossi, he's going to go back to the OHL, so there's really no point to take a roster spot, I think, by signing him. Uh, Luff here. AHL guy, maybe a fourth liner for us. Brunstrom, I think, should, should turn out to be a bomb six NHL forward, so I'm uh, gonna keep him for sure. But guys like Rempel here, 24 years old, 72 overall. Like, what's he gonna be, 75 max? Just not worth keeping. So looking at our defense here, guys, if TBR and Walker both come back, we still need three NHL defensemen. Uh, in terms of goaltending, so Quick's making six million for another three years. He actually dropped from 82, so I don't think we're gonna be able to trade him. He's another guy, kind of like Carter and Brown, we're just stuck with. Uh, Georgia have 2.7 for two years. It's a little expensive, but I don't think anyone's going to offer him that. Doesn't want to come back, but he should eventually accept. Peterson, we're definitely just going to trade away for like a fourth or something because I want Askarov here to be the AHL starter. And I'm thinking Vlada here should be the AHL backup. 73 74 is a pretty solid combo. So Poulin, 30 years old, 70 overall. Don't need him. Um, Ingham there, 2066 low fringe is okay, but uh, we have enough goalie prospects. Perrick's a fringe starter. We got that Blancfist guy, medium starter. Just didn't need to keep those two. Also, too, totally forgot to mention, we have 27 million in cap space. So, uh, I think I am going to offer Duclair some money. Uh, let's just give him what he's asking. Four million there for three years. If he says no, I mean, I think that's already a pretty good offer. Maybe we can try and get him in UFA. And again, we have a lot of money to spend. We don't have to spend it all. I mean, unless we do something insane in free agency, as well as find a starting goaltender, I feel like we're still not going to be contending next year. So, I feel like rather than spend as much money as we can, we should just be smart with who we sign. So, TBR actually rejected the offer. We gave him an extra 200k, but he wants to test free agency. Uh, Wagner, Wagner, someone tell me. He said yes. Walker wants to test free agency. I'm pretty sure he's an RFA, so we'll just qualify him. Georgia wants to test free agency. Wow. Same with Duclair. Um, honestly, we can probably get them cheaper, just sign them in free agency. It's kind of a bug, I think, in this game. So we'll qualify them all and then just do that. These guys didn't realize Brock Corky needed a new contract, so we signed him. I feel like he's a solid fourth line center. 78 overall has, like, what, medium top nine potential. Um, the rest of the guys I could qualify, I did. Uh, Duclair and TBR, unfortunately, are just going to be going to free agency, but again, we should be able to get them cheaper once there, and obviously there's tons of other guys, so maybe we won't even want them. We're going to have like 27 million in cap space, so I'm curious to see what is available. What can we bring here to the LA Kings? Taylor Hall, maybe? Taylor Hall, wow. 91 overall, he wants 10.5. Petrangelo as well, 10.2. I actually added the Scandella extension when I was like updating the rosters. I figured St. Louis going to have a tough time keeping him. Mantha there, Detroit doesn't have locked up yet. 8.8, he's an 88. Tyson Berry, Tyler Pertuzzi as well, Detroit needs to lock up. 
um, Kevin Shankirk, TJ Brody, Schultz, Howell, Athens CU. Of course, he's on the Oilers now, but still a lot of Detroit players. Uh, Froelich. Froelich's up to an 84. That's really surprising. 53 points last year. I think that's not enough to give him a boost. I think like he was 82 before that. Kulchuk as well, I think, got a plus one. I want to say he was an 83. Uh, Gustafson, Henestroza there. Taze, Chara's not going back to Boston. There's one guy I haven't seen yet that I figured had to be here, and that's Anthony Sorelli. Lightning just don't have the cast space to re-sign him. Actually made him an 83 high top six. He must have dropped by one. 22 years old though. If we put him on like our second line center, I feel like he could grow a ton. 3.3 million. I think that'll cost us like a second round pick. And we could obviously probably get him locked up long term. Never mind. It's a lot of money long term. Um, three years I think is pretty good. We do three years at like 3.75. Is that still a second round pick? It is. Okay, so hopefully he says yes to that. I think that'd be a steal. Kevin LeBanc here is also an 82 overall, but he's low top six. A couple years old there at 24. Definitely a lot of good RFA options. I mean, we could go after one of the big ones, but I don't think it makes a lot of sense to give our first round pick. That pick could be, you know, the first overall. Uh, now, Taylor Hall, 28. We could honestly bring in and be part of the rebuild. But Trangelo, 30. <laughs> also an option, honestly. And it might make sense, too, since all of our best prospects are four. We don't really have a big defensive prospect. Or I guess we could try and trade Subban for one, too. Um, there's some options for sure. I feel like Taylor Hall I have to go for, like, even if we're rebuilding. Um, 10.5 for six years. Let's just throw Hall the offer. Trangel's a couple years older, and we have Subban already, so I'm going to probably stay away from that. As I feel like by the time we're competing, he's like 34, so I don't know. That might be around the time of his decline. I'm um, thinking it's just probably smart to hold off. Also, guys, totally forgot. Let's check what goalies are out there. Obviously, ours are set, but uh, Leonard 87, Holpe 86. He actually dropped by a couple. I think he changed his potential from like high lead to medium. You got Crawford, Allmark, Grice, Kudobin. Okay, so... I mean, yeah, we could sign Leonard or Holpe. Leonard's a bit higher rated, elite potential, a bit younger, but we don't have the defense in front of him, I think, to really do any damage. I feel like a scare off should be our starter by the time we're ready to compete in a couple years. And in the meantime, we'll just roll with quick. It makes a lot more sense. And wow, look at this. Georgia's asking for 1.1 for one year. Way less than he asked us for. Uh, I'm thinking two years, 1.5. I think like we were gonna offer him, what, 1.8 for two years? And he said no. It's so dumb how that works out. Also, guys, I'm looking at good 2A players here. Special to come into contract. I assume unless Detroit's like at the max roster spots, they'll, they'll match this, but uh, might as well give it a go. Also made both back and Olsen contract offers, early 20s, mid 60s. Like, they can turn into high 70s bomb six guys for us. I'm also looking at Eric Gustafson here, guys. He's only 28, so if we're competing in a few years, he's 31. 4.75 for six years from 84. Really isn't that bad. Five years, oh, about five years, it barely makes it higher. So let's try, I mean, you can even do five by five for him. Uh, I don't think it's that bad of a contract, honestly. Actually, if we lower it to four years, his money doesn't change. So we'll try five million in four years. We're being a bit stingy, but we can afford to be because we're not really trying to compete now. So if we don't like the contract, no reason to sign it. Also, guys, I would like to bring Duclair back. He's only 24. Um, we'll, offer him, we'll offer him what we offered before, 4.1 for two years. Hopefully he says yes. So Kyle Olsen signed with us. We just got a prospect for free, which is nice. Um, back as well signed with us. We'll see about, you know, Taylor Hall, those other guys. Uh, Augustin just said yes, okay. I thought we were getting him two less years. He still must have liked the money, I'm guessing. Yeah, your cash offer. George have said yes. He could have got more money. He signed before free agency. Duclair said yes. He's coming back. Sorelli has accepted our offer as of now, which is really nice. Svechikov appreciates your interest. We want the Griffins. That's fine. Hull hasn't said anything yet. I don't know if we'll get him. Oh my god. Okay, so we have Taylor Hall, which is going to speed up the rebuild, but we still have pretty much no defense. I think I actually still have to sign like two NHL defensemen. Hall had 95 points last year. That's nuts. I know one guy I saw guys, I was just like looking through teams. I think Panarin up to a 93. I want to say it was a 91 before. But Tarangelo is still available, but we now have $5 million in cap space. Again, I mean, in a couple of years, we'll have 10 million from Brown and Carter alone. Year after that, we get another six from Quick. So Taze might be a guy we could trade for. Um, RFA there. Feel like we could probably get him for about the money we have and then after that i really just need somebody that's like a depth dude for cheap and you know what guys i think i'm gonna give cody cc an offer here 26 79 medium top six it could turn into an 80 uh definitely though it's gonna be one year um i guess we'll give him 1.6 for one year if no one else makes him an offer i think he says yes right here guys the offer make the islanders for taze Blancfist, who's actually that medium starter glue we just drafted. 52 overall, though 18. Gonna take a while to grow. We have a scare off. And then our second round pick, 2022. Obviously, the 2021. Hopefully, we'll get a Sorelli. So we'll see what the Islanders say here. Trade's accepted. I think that's an awesome trade for us. Also, guys, the Rangers want Peterson here, who again is an extra goalie. We'll see if they give us a fifth. 
Trades rejected, okay. Uh, honestly, he's like 25, 76. I'll take a 7th. I really don't know what else I could take that's less than that. There you go. And like I was saying before too, look at that. Panarin now in 93. And the very next day, guys, Tampa Bay decided they're not willing to match her offer to Sorelli, so just got him for a second round pick. I feel like he could be a very good second line center, especially with that potential. Wow, look at this offer from the Blues. They want Jean Luc Foodie, who we got in like the third round, I think, low top six, with a couple thirds for their first round pick. I mean, St. Louis is good though. They did lose Petrangelo, but still, if it's a late first, we're looking at a medium top six in exchange for a low top six and two thirds, which also could be, if we get lucky, you know, it could be two low top six. Ooh, I'm gonna say no, just cause I feel like it'll be a late first. And Cody CC here actually rejected our offer with the Predators. That's all right. We have five and a half million in cap space still. Let's see if we can get Taze signed for here. Uh, he wants 4.5 for four years. That's pretty reasonable to be honest for an 83. He's got a bit of potential left. Let's do 4.4 for four. I feel like he should say yes. And there we go, Taze accept our offer. So I think we have like one RFA defenseman still to say yes. And then once we do that, I think we need still a sixth NHL defenseman, assuming no one grows. I think our best guy is like a 75, so I'll wait till the end of the summer and just get best guy available for a million bucks. And look at this, a big trade just went down. Arizona gets a Vander Kane in exchange for a first and second round pick, anti Ranta and Grabner. Obviously the Sharks felt Martin Jones was not good enough. They get Ranta, they shed some cap space, pick up a first and a second. I honestly think that's a great trade for the Sharks. And look at this, another trade for Foodie. The assistant GM must put him on the block, but obviously like my Spitfire boys, first and a third from the Leafs. So it's essentially a first rounder for Foodie and a third, which is a low top six and a third for a medium top six. Again, Foodie's a pretty high rated low top six though, so I think I'm gonna keep him. And another big trade just went down. Nashville gets Eric Stahl for a first and second round pick. These teams are just trading away picks like mad. Oh, look at this. Sean Walker actually accepted our qualifying offer. Not sure what it was. I feel like it should be pretty cheap though. So we're in September now, guys. Still need a couple NHL defensemen. Athens Steve hasn't signed yet. Top free agent. Henestroza as well. McCaution. Uh, Hosang. Anderson. They'll probably get their money or, you know, two and a half million dollar one year deals. Uh, Cuckoo here. 80 overall. I think we can get for free. Yeah, 1.25. You can probably come in and steal them. I'm not sure actually who he's on right now. Uh, Chicago Blackhawks. If they don't have the money, we get them. Uh, Schmaltz, 2679. That's exactly what we're looking for here. Basically just a free player, play on the bomb pair. Same goes for Borg, man, I'll sign both. He's one overall lower, but a year younger. I feel like they could be a decent bomb pair if uh, Chicago matches Cuckoo's offer. Hopefully those top five guys are all 80 plus actually get signed because it sucks if they just sat out a year. And so Cuckoo did accept their offer, but Chicago has a chance to match. Schmaltz came with us, uh, same with Borg, man, so good to see. And I was looking at our coaches, guys, and they suck. They're all C overall, except for the head coaches of B. Uh, AHL goalie coach, D minus, so that doesn't matter. Also too, staff chemistry, AHL 55%. Pretty bad. NHL is 30%, which is terrible. Now, we don't have a goalie coach. Just made an offer to one, but honestly, I think it's the head coach. Style defensive. We have a pretty offensive group of forwards, so I'm going to fire him here. Hopefully, I can find somebody who's a better fit. And you know what? I'm going to fire the associate coach, too. We didn't have a great season last year, and like we don't aren't getting any chemistry. Like, look at that. I just promoted the assistant coach to head coach, and we have more staff chemistry with just him than the other two, so... Uh, pretty sad, honestly. Now, there's only two NHL head coaches available. Both are defensive, so we're gonna have to go with the best associate coach. Probably just gonna find the guy with the best team fit. They're all B minuses. So this Corbett guy here has a 63% team fit, which isn't too bad. A minus teaching as well, I think will be a big help for us. So three years wanted. Uh, we're saving a ton of money. I think our last guy was like three million, but we're not doing owner or anything. Still gonna offer him the NHL head coach job there, 26 k And the guy with the next best fit was Everly. Here was an offensive dude, so he actually wants a bit more money and hopefully he'll come in and be our NHL associate coach. And as it turns out, the Blackhawks did match Cuckoo's contract. So after hiring all those new coaches, guys, our staff chemistry is now 75%, which is pretty solid. Obviously, a lot better than 33. 33 is one of the lowest I've ever seen. Also, to our head coach, he's actually making less than the associate coach, but A- minus teaching, I think, is the biggest thing. We want to help this team grow, reach their potential. I'm more worried about that than wins and losses. Uh, the two guys are generalists. They should do their part. So... Hopefully, uh, you know, it works out a bit better. So I just finished adding the rosters for next season, guys. Check this out. As you can see there, team stats is hopeful. Honestly, I don't think we're going to be second last or whatever we were. I think we will be competitive. I don't know if we'll make the playoffs. We'll be competitive for sure. So we got Hull, Kopitar, and Sorelli on the first line. I want Sorelli to be second line center, but in terms of chemistry, it just didn't work out. We got Ferk there with Carter and Duclair. It's actually an all-sniper second line. Somehow not losing chemistry, so we'll see how they do. Uh, Camp there playing with Turcott and Velarde, so... Hopefully that's a solid third line. Then we got Brown there playing with Prokhorkin and Ayafalo on the fourth. Um, Ayafalo actually made a winger. Defense here, Gustin Subban get a plus three. We got Walker Taze on the second pair. 
Borgman Schmaltz on the bottom pair. Looking at the special teams here, not too bad. I feel like that first unit is pretty solid. Turcott, elite potential. I'm hoping, you know, grows a ton playing with these guys. Kopitar Hall, Subban Ferks obviously got a cannon. Second unit there, I think, is pretty solid as well. Four man power play. Penalty kill, that first one gets a plus five. A three man penalty kill there. Again, I think, you know, this team ain't that bad. Uh, goaltending, Georgia's now an 83. He's our starter. Quick 82 is going to be backing him up. So, goaltending, obviously, I'd say is our weakest point. It's either goaltending or defense, but I feel like we should be a fun team. Pretty high scoring, especially adding Hall. A lot of young players. You know, it should be good. Um, AHL, actually, a lot better than I expected. So, Anderson Dolan here, I actually made him a winger too. He's got 60 faceoffs. Playing on the first line there with Lazat and Raymond. So, should be a sick first line. Uh, Grunstrom there with Kupari. Wagner, Wagner, someone tell me. Uh, we got more there. I'm a Dio, Luff. I mean, the AHL team is a solid top nine. Defense there is like all, you know, mid 70s ish. Goaltending wise, Askarov's our starter. Like, a lot to look forward to here. I think with this LA Kings team. We still got guys, I think, like Kaliev to come up, uh, Kill Thomas. I think we have like a defenseman or two. Definitely, you know, things are looking good here in LA. Now, I know for the 2021 draft, Raddy's going to be the top pick. He's good, but he's no Lafreniere. So, if we actually somehow are decent this year, it's not too big a deal. It's more so actually the 2022 draft where I don't want to kind of get ahead of ourselves when we really aren't going to be contending yet because we want to have a shot at Shane Wright, uh, Matthew Savoy, or Brad Lampert. And then, of course, 2023, then we could have a shot at Connor Bedard. So, Hopefully, you know, it's a slow rebuild, slowly get better and better, keep adding prospects. But that's me, guys, for this first season. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Also, before I forget, I'll show you the ratings here one year later. What are we looking like? 10 better offense already, 91, 86 D, 83 goal tiny. So yeah, I feel like we did a pretty solid job there in that first year. If you guys enjoyed this one, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.